Well, that was yesterday. Here's today. Here we are back in mission control. And uh, as you heard earlier, I mentioned that the base is a pretty huge place. It covers n nearly half the size of Rome, and there are so many different facilities here, mainly the uh, launch zones, uh, satellite facilities, and a whole range of uh, other buildings. And we call it the range. That includes actually the downrange stations, or the ground stations, which are dotted along the flight path, and they track the launch vehicle as it flies over. You can imagine the logistics involved in everybody communicating with each other and that's why all the information is sent here to Mission Control and everybody listens to the range operations manager. So uh, the other uh, m control room which is important here is the launch control center. This is about three kilometers from the pad and it's often known as the bunker. Various different teams working here. One's responsible for ground operations led by the launch site operations manager and the quality uh, team then makes sure that all the uh, regulations and rules are adhered to. Another team ensures the flight readiness of the vehicle. They're led by the Ariane production manager, there he is, um, and they oversee all the operations from the assembly of the launch vehicle to the moment of launch. And we also have a safeguarding team who make sure that all the operations are carried out according to, to very strict rules guaranteeing the utmost safety here at the base. About a minute ago, the computers on launch control sent the liftoff time to the computers on Ariane. We were talking earlier about the umbilical uh, tower. You can see, uh, you may not see them very well from this angle, but if you go up to the top of the vehicle, you can see uh, two arms. We'll get another angle on this in just a second um, and they are feeding cryogenic propellants into the upper stage of the launch vehicle. You can see them there three quarters of the way up on the right hand side two great big we call them the cryogenic arms clamping to the vehicle and that's where they attach. The cryogenic fuel is actually incredibly incredibly cold minus uh, 253 degrees for the hydrogen and minus 150 for the oxygen. We have to keep them that cold in order to maintain them as liquids. And they do tend to evaporate, so we keep those arms there right until uh, seven seconds before launch and we dis disconnect them just before launch. You'll see them dropping away. The folk here going outside now to view the launch from the viewing station. You'll see a seven second delay between the initial ignition and liftoff. That's because we'll be checking the Vulcan engine before we light At the boosters. Attention pour moins une minute. Top. À zero moins une minute. One minute to launch and we are live at the Guyana Space Centre. We are orbiting Thor 7 for Teleno and built by Space Systems Loral and Seacral 2 for Telespazio and the French and Italian Ministries of Defence built by Talazelania Space. Our very best wishes to everybody involved in today's launch. À tous de DDO, attention pour les deux comptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage EAP, décollage.
pollution est nominale. There she goes, hauling herself against the gravity of La our planet. Est Everything's normal, he says. The propulsion is normal. We broke the sound barrier at 48 seconds after launch and went into Mach 1. And we're only now getting the sound here at the Jupiter Control Center as she flies over. I can feel the ground shaking. Blazing a trail across the sky here at the Guyana Space Center. After the initial 13 second vertical climb, we rotated to the east and we're heading out over the Atlantic Ocean. We're burning three engines, but the boosters, those two big boosters are doing all the work right now. They're providing 90% of our thrust. And if we get lucky, we might even see them falling away with the naked eye. The boosters are burning at 3000 degrees Celsius. And the main stage that they're attached to is at virtually at absolute zero. So you can imagine the incredible complexities of the temperatures there, a feat of human engineering. And those boosters. And those boosters are falling away. We've had confirmation there. We can see them, the two dots, just through the clouds falling back to Earth. They've burnt their propellant. We don't need them anymore. And we've lost about three quarters of our mass in just over two minutes. So now we're burning the main stage. You can see it there, the gray, the gray structure, the big tank. A huge tank of cryogenic propellant. It's going to burn for about nine minutes. And you can see at the front there, the fairing. On the right-hand side, you can see the image there. The fairing is the nose of the vehicle, protecting our satellites from the rigors of the launch, from the sound and the acoustic waves at launch. It's obviously very, very loud. And, of course, friction. If you look at the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you can see we're 114 kilometers above the Earth. That means we're on the outer edge of the atmosphere. There's no friction anymore. We're on the edge of space, and we don't need the fairing. So it falls back down to Earth, and we can see Thor 7, our first satellite the there. He says everything's going according to plan. We can see Thor 7 at the front for the very first time, and the two grey... Rectangles are the solar panels behind it. We can't see it now because it's hidden under the silder is Seacral 2. We're powering across the Atlantic using the Vulcan engine. It's very powerful. It, it burns 320 kilograms of propellant a second. That's about 500 times more than a jet engine. The computer-generated images that we're looking at are showing us what the experts have planned and calculated is happening to the launcher. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. He says, tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. All the parameters on board are normal. And, uh, we're seeing there the uh, tracking station at Galio. That's the... That's the tracking station at the Guyana Space Center. And the computer-generated images are uh, what's actually happening in space. Uh, basically, the teams plan a very precise schedule of events based on extremely accurate Pas predictions. And, and they put all of that information into the computer. And these images are a simulation of those predictions. We took off five minutes and 23 seconds ago.